A very good morning from CTV Sports here in the heart of uh, Wellington. I'd like to welcome everybody to the limited edition eight golf final 2024. Teams uh, had a little bit of a delay getting here. There was uh, a little bit of a tragic, tragic, uh, no, not tra traffic, excuse me, a traffic issue. Uh, but everybody's well and everybody's uh, made it to Grand Champions Polo Club. We're coming to you from Field 5 on this very, very uh, hot morning, slightly overcast, but uh, temperatures uh, slightly higher than in the last few days. And uh, you can see the two uh, mounted officials ready to get this limited edition eight goal final underway. Let me quickly give you a, a rundown of who's who. In blue in this final, we've got Amaro Polo, led by Scott Sabaro at number one, Antonio Aguirre, the two goaler at number two, then Chris Campson. Uh, the uh, six goaler at number three, and Michael Armour, the uh, uh, four, to bring upon the zero goaler uh, at uh, at number four. Pony Express, led by Lily Hagemeyer. Uh, nice to see her in the final. Then at number two, Finn Segunda. At number three, uh, Mackenzie Weiss, another six goaler there. That's going to be the battle of Campson versus Weiss. And at number four, Justin Daniels. So, <clears throat> the stage is set here you get a good uh, a good aerial view of uh, of field number five and I'm uh, just being told that from uh, uh, our field side correspondent down uh, down there it's also extremely windy so uh, and I can looking looking at those flags looks like the wind's coming from all over the place but it looks like it's yeah, probably coming more from the from the north uh, northeast it looks like so uh, let's hope that that uh, does not have too much of an impact on the two teams as uh, we're just waiting for the last one or two players to uh, to make their way out uh, onto the field to get this final going. Now, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of polo still to be played here, especially when it comes to the, uh, the high goal, of course. The Triple Crown very much uh, getting underway, and uh, I've just been... Uh, confirm that the wind is definitely coming from the south so uh, nearly got it right but thank you very much Steph for helping me out there I thought it was southeast but it's from the south uh, this wind of uh, on this field of course uh, running uh, from uh, north uh, break apart from east to west here at uh, Grand Champions Field 5 and uh, yeah I think all the players are now more or less ready to go and the final little greetings so once again, Pony Express in the white shirts, Lily Hagemeyer at one, Finn Segunda at number two, Mackenzie Weiss today playing the number three position, and at number four, Justin Daniels, Amara Polo in the blue, led by Scott Sabaro, uh, Antonio Gary, the two goaler. Keep an eye on him. He's uh, very, very solid. And then, of course, Chris Campson at three, and Michael Armour at uh, number four. So both teams coming in off uh, eight goals handicap so no advantage given and uh, we're about ready to get this uh, final underway players about to line up so best of luck then six chuckers and uh, away we go All about to be thrown into play, and uh, I'll give you a little bit of an update on how these two teams did uh, getting through to the final. Amara Polo, they uh, took on victory. Polo Armstrong Farm beat them nine goals to seven. Uh, Pony Express, they also beat victory by uh, eight goals to four. Uh, and away we go here then. Balls in play, as I say, and it's picked up very quickly here by the team in blue and uh, I'm pretty sure both of these teams are going to come out very quickly very strong over on the far side creating a bit of space for himself is uh, Antonio Aguirre everybody going back Finn Segunda now the two the number two player there in white trying to take on the two goaler goes into the corner coming charging down the line with the number three and that's where you're going to get your first whistle Mackenzie Weiss jumping on that right of way so uh, very quickly here, both of these teams not wasting any time, wanting to make a, a first and a very early impression. Nice run here. You can see they're coming in from the right. Now behind, you can see the number four in white. Yeah, Broken play and down the line, he comes charging there with the number three. 
uh, Mackenzie Weiss, good call. Uh, penalty from the spot, quickly taken in favour of Pony Express, and away we go. Picks it up nicely on the near side, and there's the backhand shot, didn't quite make the connection. In comes Daniels. Justin quickly turns it, hammers that one downfield, and he's found Mackenzie. Mackenzie gets a little visit there from Antonio Gary. He uh, lets him pass. Nicely done. Still, Mackenzie Vice. Yeah, weaving his way through, working it. And, uh, well, he believed that he uh, he was infringed there with his right away. Umpire saying play on. They still have it. Pony Express. Here comes a little under the next shot. And it just went wide there, the shot coming from Finn Segunda. Kavsen already giving, uh, being quite vocal there, giving his... Uh, the rest of his team uh, teammates exactly and very, very precise instructions of where he wants them to be. So Campson will knock the ball into play and uh, hopefully get this ball a bit further downfield and away from his own goal mouth. First pass, nicely done. Aguirre. Two shots and the ball's over the halfway line now up to the front door. Michael Armour, can he get a piece of this or will Daniels come in between? Daniels, who's been working very hard throughout uh, this tournament. And once again, Pony Express winning possession. This time it'll be Mackenzie Weiss. The sixth goaler up against Chris Campson. The sixth goaler in blue. Picked up now by Antonio. Didn't get a clean touch. Broken play. And it'll be Finn Secundo very quickly to try and work this one. Daniels will tuck in behind him. And, uh, yeah, a little, bit of a, a little bit of a cluster with a bunch of players coming in from all angles. Mackenzie there just having a little team talk on the field. Let's have another look at this. All looks relatively clean. Here you see the backhand, which was a miss hit. It's picked up on the near side by the number two. And uh, yeah, he had a little bit of traffic right in front of him. Not an easy call, um, but the umpires very quickly making a decision and uh, a blocking foul will result with a penalty from the spot of 5A. Once again, in favor of Amaro Polo. But McKenzie Vice will uh, jump in between that. will pick it up, take it off the boards. Yeah, Kamsa needs to allow McKenzie to make that play. Here it comes. Little chip shot. And Daniels might pick this up on the near side if he... Uh, yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. Still with the number four. Daniels, well done. And then the finishing touch on the near side forehand. Beautifully executed. Took a bit of work. But Justin Daniels picking up the first score here in this final for Pony Express. See it again here. There's the ball. Has a slight deflection. Working it very well and just keeping his composure. Aiming for the far post. No mistake. So Pony Express getting off this, uh, onto the score sheet with that first goal here courtesy of Justin Daniels. Back to the halfway line they go. Remember, they change ends. Now, of course, this is the limited edition Echo final and uh, Grand Champions Polo Club again setting a new precedent. We have triggers in place for this game. Uh, that was very much part of the uh, tournament committee's brief that uh, there would be um, uh, triggers uh, in place for this game. Uh, very, very important uh, to mention that. And, of course, not to forget the challenges that the team have, uh, something which was introduced here into the World Polo League, and it seems to be uh, having such a positive effect. And here we go, shot number two, but just wide from uh, Finn Segunda. <coughs> a little bit unlucky. Did everything, uh, did everything right. So... Courtesy change, you can see here, Kamsen jumping from one pony to the next. As I said, triggers and challenges in place, something which I think we're going to see a lot more of, not only here at Grand Champions Polo Club, but I think throughout the polo community worldwide. We've seen uh, the courtesy change, which was introduced here, has also found a huge uh, positive uh, 
feedback. We see it also happening a lot more, uh, as I said, uh, in uh, outside of the US. Uh, has had an amazing effect on the prevention and the uh, uh, the wealth and the health and safety of the four-legged athlete. So you can see Polo still always trying to improve um, itself and making health and safety, of course, or keeping health and safety always a priority. And um, that is very much now trickled and filtered down to all levels from six to 26 goal uh, Polo. And of course, once again, grand champions raising the bar. Here we go then with Mr. Chris Campson for Amaro Polo. I haven't quite yet seen Amaro open up uh, the way we know they can. Stolen on the boards here by McKenzie. McKenzie Vice will just take this one back. He's got Campson right behind him, takes it out to the left. It down comes the hammer from Antonio Aguirre. Loose ball play, you can turn on it first. It will be Mr. Daniels. Justin. Yeah. He knows he's got a man on just behind him there. There's the under the neck shot from Daniels. But again, wide. So quite a few shots coming here on that Amaro goal here in this first chucker from Pony Express. And Amaro Polo not yet really, as I said, finding their rhythm. But uh, that man, Chris Campson, with all his experience, I'm sure it won't be too long until we see Amaro blossom here in this final. Out to the right-hand side again, looking for Aguirre in this combination, Chris Campson and uh, Antonio Aguirre, as we've seen throughout this limited edition eight goal, working very well together. Campson, once again on the ball. The two six goalers there in a little bit of a duel. Campson hammers that one downfield. Uh, he was looking for Scott Sabaro, and in comes Lily Hagemeyer. Move out of the way to allow Finn Zagunda to pick it up and turn things around. And again, at the moment, as I said, Amara Polo not really able to get uh, too close or close enough to that uh, Pony Express goal. Pony Express seems to just have the slight, uh, the slight heads up here and a slight advantage. Again, a broken play, a little under the neck shot. And clinical in the finish there by the number three, Mackenzie Weiss. Just a little bit too easy for my liking here. You see the play again. The near side backhand did not pick that up. And, of course, that's uh, something which will be very quickly turned around. So those sort of plays in front of goal, they need to be sure to get them cleared. Clock ticking down. We're down to the last uh, few seconds. I'm sure we'll get another throw in. Here it comes before the uh, the first horn. And once again, Pony Express winning the throw in. Mackenzie Weiss. And, uh, yeah, he'll drill that one down. Now, maybe uh, they can pick up another quick goal. They still have a few seconds left to play here. Takes it out to the left-hand side. The near side backhand shot coming in front of goal. And a little bit wrong-footed there as... Uh, Daniels now having to go back with the six goaler Campson. Campson opening up things very nicely. But uh, we are down to the last five or so seconds. The chip shot. Yeah, now all of a sudden this game is uh, coming up very nicely. Turned around, and that will be the second horn. So two goals for Pony Express by Mackenzie Vice and Justin Daniels. Uh, no score yet by Amara, but I'm sure that will change when we hope you will come back and join us for chucker number two of the limited edition eight gold 2024.
Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us here, CTV Sports, on this Thursday morning, the 11th of April. <clears throat> Very hot conditions out there this morning. Um, for those of you who uh, work in centigrade, like myself, around about 32, 33 degrees. For those of you who work in Fahrenheit, I think we're touching the uh, the 90 degree mark here. So. Uh, Quite demanding on the ponies. Wind seems to have died down a little bit and also uh, I think it's sort of slightly changing its direction. And let's hope that the wind does not have too much of an impact on the player. So ball was just thrown in after that uh, initial uh, courtesy, uh, after that initial chucker and it looked like we had a right of way infringement player in blue coming across the right of way. Uh, of all player from Pony Express, but let's just wait and see if that indeed is the case. To me, it was a clear blocking foul. Umpires moving that ball, and again, you see that's uh, dependent on where those fouls take place will determine where those balls are placed. <coughs> interestingly, in the uh, in the World Polo League, uh, where the teams, of course, have their challenges, it's interesting to see the statistics, which were, of course, produced by our uh, IRO and Senior umpire, Mr. Steve Lane. How many teams actually challenged, not the foul itself, but the ball placement? Uh, again, all very clearly stipulated based on where a foul happens on the field will determine where that penalty then will be awarded. So Chris Campson getting uh, the penalty two for Amaro Polo to pick up the first goal here for the boys in blue. Just uh, snuck in there on the inside of that uh, on that near side post. So Chris Campson opens up the scoring account here for Amaro Polo. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more of those sort of plays coming your way here this uh, this morning. And for those who've just joined us, let me just uh, quickly remind you who's who in the blue team. Amara Polo, Scott Sabara at one, Antonio Geary at two, Chris Campson at three, and Michael Armour at four. Pony Express in white with Lily Hagemeyer at one, Finn Segunda at two, and then <coughs> Mackenzie Weiss at three, and Justin Daniels at the number four position. <coughs> Ball thrown back into play, and it's the Blues who have it. And Campson, after a nice bit of work there from Antonio Geary, will take this one and try and work it himself. Still now on the near side, just a little touch is all that it would have needed, but a deflection, and that will set Mackenzie Weiss and Mr. Finn Segunda in the uh, offensive mode. Turned around on the boards. Antonio must allow a little bit of space here for Mackenzie to make the play. He's going to send it out to, well, slightly to the left-hand side. I think he was looking for Daniels. <coughs> Daniel's just a bit too far afield to pick that ball up. Oh, nicely done by Antonio Aguirre. And now all of a sudden, Campson wants that rotation to work, but the ball just doesn't come to him. Uh, it does now. He had to slow it down a little bit, but Antonio Aguirre working very hard. As I said, this combination, Campson and Aguirre, very, very strong. Campson again will pick up the loose ball. Had two. Defending players there from Pony Express on them within a matter of seconds. Um, so they need to just you know, support him as much as they can. Nice little backhand again from Antonio Aguirre. Slowly but surely, Amaro now starting to show the Amaro Polo team that we've come accustomed to. But of course, this young man, Mr. Justin Daniels, he sees an opportunity. He will seize it, and he will take that ball all the way downfield, and that's uh, another great play here by Justin Daniels picking up his second goal in this final. Here you see it again, broken play, and Daniels, he takes the man first, pushes him out of the way to create enough space for him to pick this ball up very nicely on his stick side. Good play by Justin Daniels, dealing with Scott Sabaro, and then uh, taking the ball. And just one hit, that's all it took. And uh, all of a sudden, three goals to one. And the Blues have it once again. 
This time Antonio Aguirre will leave it for Campson. Working it. Now he's going to run it. Still Campson. He saw a little gap. Runs into a little bit of traffic. Let's uh, Daniels override. Definitely within uh, within range here. Oh, looks like a player just came across right in front of Chris there. Let's uh, wait and see what the umpire's made of that. But again, you'd have thought he might have just taken a shot. Here we see Camps in again. He's working it. He gets a challenge there. For, well, he doesn't. He moves out of the way. Now, that's the time here where I would have thought he would have taken a shot. But uh, yep, coming just ever so slightly across that right of way from Chris Camps and Mackenzie Weiss. As uh, we go to our second courtesy change, we'll wait, of course, for them to come back and see what the umpires uh, made of that. To me, it looked like a blocking foul. And uh, once his pony, this courtesy change is over. You can see a good shot there of uh, Scott Sabaro doing a flying pony change. And then when they come back, we'll see exactly what the umpires made of that, if they saw it the way I saw it as well. Uh, I can tell you that uh, tomorrow the high goal action continues. We've got an early start tomorrow, Friday the 12th of uh, April, 9.45. Allegria will be taking on the Maltese Falcons and then Casablanca uh, will uh, be taking on Senfest. So that'll be tomorrow at about quarter past 11. Good way to start the weekend here with some high goal polo of the World Polar League. So, yeah, indeed, we are going to have a hit from the spot slash penalty two. Camps, of course, will take it from the spot to pick up, I'm pretty sure, his second goal of this final. There it is. So, from the line, the second goal, the second penalty two, this time from the spot, Chris Campson. And uh, that makes it just uh, two goals to three. If you are supporting Amara, Pony Express still holding on to that very narrowest of margins, with uh, a second goal coming from Justin Daniels just a few moments ago, putting Pony Express up in the lead by three goals to two. A little under three and a half minutes remain in the second chucker. They come back to the halfway line. Remember, they change ends after every goal is scored. And uh, looks like that wind's picking up again there on field five over at Grand Champions Polo Club. Here we go, ball back in play. And once again, Pony Express winning that throw in. Camson coming back, working very hard. We'll turn things around very quickly. Now, here we go then. Amaro Polo, and that'll be Scott Sabaro on the move. Scott, first touch, overrides. Mackenzie Weiss, I think, might have just clipped him, got a little piece of him as they turn it around. Yeah, he just needs to hold fire. Well, we do have a whistle. On that, uh, on that play. Okay. We're going to have a... I've just been told there from our field side correspondent it's something that happened outside the play. Nothing uh, to be worried about. We're going to use this moment, or one or two players are going to use this moment for a quick uh, per pony change. So just a little brief time out here because all the polo that was going on seemed to be uh, relatively clean. So just waiting, I believe, for Mackenzie Weiss to, uh, to uh, as I say, get himself a fresh uh, set of legs. But I can tell you, no injury sustained to neither horse nor player, so all is good. But of course, um, the right decision there to uh, to just interrupt uh, this play with a uh, a little time out there. So, as I was saying, tomorrow the World Polo League action continues, and uh, what a great uh, season we've had here this year. The sixth in the well in the making. It's uh, it's nearly made now. And uh, for those of you who uh, remember, we uh, we announced that the Beach Polar, the World Polar League Beach Polar, which uh, was due to take place later this month, has been moved and has a permanent home now 
uh, in Miami Beach uh, in November. MiamiPolarCup.com is where you can get all the information and also secure yourself some tickets. They, send, they tend to be sold out very, very quickly, so very much looking forward to uh, the World Polar League's Beach Polar World Cup down in Miami Beach uh, in November. Mackenzie Weiss, there you see him there on a fresh set of legs. He's okay. He's back in the saddle again, able to continue the uh, the last uh, little over two and a half minutes of play remaining here in Chaka number two. Chris Campson picking up two penalty twos uh, in the second Chaka. Um, Justin Daniels scoring in the first, the second, as did Mackenzie Weiss. He picked up a goal in the first Chaka. So three goals to two. And uh, fair play knocking coming up for Pony Express and Mackenzie Weiss. We'll get things moving again here with, as I say, a little a little over two minutes remaining here in the second chuck. A nice long ball and Hagemeyer. Oh, what a good pick up on the near side. Lily Hagemeyer. Well done, Lily. And now the finishing touch. Well, incredible composure. And what a great way to come back here. Lily Hagemeyer, superb. Her positioning, superb. Her calmness, a superb pass. You also have to give it up. Uh, coming to her, and then look at this, keeps her composure, just puts it through, absolutely nothing Michael Armour could have done there. So four goals to two. Well done, Lily Hagemeyer, and we're under two minutes remaining here in Chaka number two. So, little cushion of two goals restored for Pony Express. At the far side, Antonio Aguirre, can he pick up a, a last-minute goal here for uh, Amara Polo, or will Pony Express... And this man, Mackenzie Weiss, extend that lead to possibly five. Mackenzie Weiss, the finishing touch, the cut shot. Well, Campson tried to save it, but a superb run again from the halfway line and a clinical finish by Mackenzie Weiss. Nicely taken downfield. The cut shot, there it is. Again, aiming for that far post, hammers that one through. So at the moment, Pony Express very much in control here. And uh, Amara Polo still not quite up to speed the way we've seen them play. Possibly now, Aguirre, Antonio, also from the halfway line, trying to do exactly what uh, Mackenzie Weiss did just a few moments ago, Campson. Yeah, but gives it basically to Mackenzie. And again, Pony Express on the move. Daniels looking for Lily Hagemeyer. Nicely touched. Oh, nice first touch here by Lily. Gets it over the halfway line. Hagemeyer, can she score a pick up a second goal? Slightly top that ball. Left behind for Amara Polo. And Antonio Aguirre will try and clear it as much or as far as he can. Left behind for Michael Armour. Campson, he overrides. We're down to the last seconds. Perfect timing here. You can see the scoreboard right behind. Four seconds remaining. The near side backhand. Well, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that will bring us to the end of the uh, second chucker. Pony Express winning this second chucker also by three goals to two. Stay with us. We'll be right back here for the third chucker of the limited edition Echo final 2024 here on CTV Sports. Have an opportunity. Santos Bellini gonna fire one from 60. Oh, off the post.
if you are in the area, I suggest you make your way to Sunset Chugger the Cocktail because this is the fun type polo match. It's where everyone's relaxed and chilling. He's having a great time. We have great hors d'oeuvres and a special drink for the day. Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us here. Limited edition 8 Golf Final 2024. You are, of course, watching all the action here live on CTV Sports. We've had two uh, yeah, mediocre, I'm just going to say that carefully, mediocre chuckers out there. Really, both of these teams not yet quite up to, uh, to speed and up to the standard that we've come, uh, come accustomed to. Um, Chris Campson, the only man to have scored for Amaro Polo, picking up two penalties from uh, the penalty two spot. Uh, Lily Hagemeyer, I've got to just uh, highlight that uh, young lady. She picked up an absolutely an amazing goal at the end uh, of Chucker number two, or just shortly before the end. And, of course, Justin Daniels and uh, Mackenzie Weiss both doing a very, very good job up at the front. And they're going to continue with exactly that same kind of pace as they did uh, in the previous two Chuckers. Mackenzie picking up his third goal of the match. And, well, it is still too early to tell, but uh, if I was to make a prediction at the moment uh, based on who is just connecting and gelling a little bit better, I would have to say Pony Express. Uh, very, very highly concentrated, highly motivated, and just have uh, a little bit more possession of the ball, have a little bit more control of the game, which seems to have stunned Amaro Polo a little bit. Uh, again, you can see they've won the, uh, the throw-in. Campson needs to allow that play to be made by McKenzie. And he's got a man out to the right. He's got somebody at the front door. Lily Hagemeyer out on the left-hand side. Daniels now will try and take on the two-goaler, Antonio Aguirre. Yeah, nicely done. A little bit of a bump there. And then that might have been just a little bit too much uh, by the umpires. Would mind having another look at that. Here you see again from the drone footage, Campson. There's the bump coming in from Daniels. Yeah, probably a little bit too much of an angle there, uh, which uh, will not go down well with the umpires. Again, a good uh, good call by our mounted officials. And uh, let's see where they move that ball. I would uh, think they're going to give a penalty for, for uh, aggressive play, at least. And I can also tell you, from uh, our lovely field side correspondent down at the field. Uh, wind is uh, not letting up at all, I've been told. 25 mile an hour gusts with up to uh, four. Uh, pH is what the weather statement said all day until eight o'clock. So a very, very, uh, a very windy day out there at uh, Grand Champions Polo Club. Yeah, you can see the flags um, dancing in the wind. Thank you very much, Steph, for giving us that uh, that update. And uh, let's see what the umpire's decision is after that. Uh, well, I can tell you that Pony Express uh, challenged that call, uh, but the call stands. The umpire said, no, nope, sorry. That uh, was a bit too close for comfort for us, so the call stands, and that means, of course, Pony Express lose their challenge for uh, this half. But uh, if uh, if you were to choose a good moment to take or make a challenge, this would be it coming uh, into the third chucker. You can see over in the background there, Chris Camerson just about to get onto a, a fresh pony. And uh, yeah, so let's see if um, Amaro can pick up a much needed goal here at the moment. They're down by four. I'm sure Chris Campson would like to reduce that and uh, make it just three. So Campson, and they're going to get a penalty from the penalty two spot. So this will be his third. 
from the line for Mr. Chris Campson. So far, the only man to have scored for Amaro Polo. There it is. No mistake. Makes it look so easy. So, Chris Campson, three for three. A hat-trick here in Chaka number three. And that was a very important goal for Amaro Polo. Just to uh, to hold on to uh, Pony Express, who are doing very well at the moment here. Mackenzie Weiss also picking up his hat-trick. Very consistent. A goal in the first to second. And just now we saw that goal in the third, right at the beginning of this third Chaka. But still plenty of time remain here in this or remains here in this first half for Pony Express uh, to maybe extend their lead or Amara Polo to close in on uh, the boys in blue. So let's have another look at what happened here. The ball is thrown into play and uh, yeah, ever so slightly clipped. You could see Daniels just moving or trying to move out of the way, but he took the right of way from an Amaro. Uh, Polo player, good call, blocking foul. We will see a hit from the spot. It happened just adjacent to the halfway line. And uh, now let's see if uh, Campson will drill this one or if he's going to work it. He's going to try and drill that one. It comes up to the front door. And uh, again, with the number four, Michael Armour trying to control it. You had Antonio Gary in there as well, just going wide. So this is where they need to maybe uh, work on a little bit, is their finishing. Pony Express dodging a bullet and have possession. And uh, Mackenzie Weiss just weighing up his options as to who he can play it to. Kamsa will be the first player he needs to get round, pass through or over. Well, he's done that with a nice little, well, a little, I should say, a long ball up to the front door. Aguirre. Now you can see Daniels just waiting there. Had to stick in situ on his near side to possibly hook him. And now, Campson. Loose ball play. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's put that one over the sideboard, which is a little bit unfortunate. So there'll be a change of possession. It's going to go in favor of Pony Express. At the moment, Pony Express, it seems that they can do no wrong. Quickly taken by McKenzie. Campson takes McKenzie and put, well, takes him out of the play and then goes for the shot. Daniels, nice long ball down the field, looking for Segunda, looking for Finn. Nice open backhand shot and what a cracking goal by Finn Segunda. And uh, it was all in the making with uh, that pass coming from Justin Daniels. But uh, that really was Top polo brought to you by that young man. Only a one goaler, but what a cracking goal by Finn Segunda. And uh, Amara Polo, of course, playing Audi in, uh, on Friday at the President's Cup National Polo Center. So if you'd like to See how that progresses. Remember, we had the uh, regional President's Cup, the USP Regional Cup's uh, final here, I believe it was yesterday. Of course, the action continues. And uh, Amara will be playing Audi on Friday at the uh, National Polo Center. So uh, I've also had, I believe, uh, a little update from the conditions out there on the field. Up to 40 miles an hour is uh, how fast that wind is going, blowing down there. So uh, that is uh, quite a significance. Thank you very much, Steph, for giving us the update, of course. Always good to know uh, what's going on out in the field. When we get that information here at CTV Sports, always happy to let you know. So I hope you're enjoying the game so far. As you can see, it's a little bit overcast, but uh, don't be fooled. It's uh, very, very warm and well, even hot and humid out there. As they line back up out on the field for the uh, 
throw in. And away we go. Amara have it. Could do with picking up another goal here. So far, just the one from Campson. Aguirre overruns. And uh, even Scott Sabaro unable to put it through just very slightly out to the right-hand side. Very, very close indeed. So Pony Express have possession. Mackenzie Weiss getting things underway. Decided to maybe run this one himself. No one on the left-hand side. Completely wide open. Camps are now coming back. Oh, a big swing and a miss hit. McKenzie, who's going to get on that line first? Well, it will be the number one. He's going to leave it. Cheeky steal there by Michael. Back to McKenzie Vice. Campson came back quickly, but uh, now onto that left-hand side again. That seems to be a bit of a, a vulnerable spot for Amaro. Down the line comes charging Segunda. Daniels. Now, loose ball play, or broken play rather, and a whistle. Now then, did Daniels have that right away? Let's have another look. The ball comes off the boards. It's picked up on the near side by up, and you can see just ever so slightly the player coming from left to right, Antonio Gary crossing the right of way of Justin Daniels. Very, very quick line change there. And uh, I'm pretty sure that, that was unintentional. But uh, again, this level of polo, very, very fast. So a penalty for Pony Express. And the man to take that will be Mackenzie Weiss. to possibly pick up his fourth goal of the game. Penalty two, just again, puts it into the near side post there. Well done, McKenzie, picking up uh, his first penalty from the line. The previous three all coming out of regular play. So three goals to one uh, as it stands at the moment uh, in this chucker. Five goals to I beg your pardon, eight goals to three overall. Pony Express definitely, definitely ticking that first box, which is uh, to get over the halfway of this uh, final with a nice little advantage, which they've worked hard for. Daniels, still Daniels up against Antonio Aguirre. Oh, well done, Justin. Then has to concede, leaves it now for McKenzie. Now McKenzie, uh, you can see he's eyeing up that goal mouth. Takes a shot, Mackenzie Weiss gets a hat-trick in this chucker. Well done, Mackenzie. From a standstill, uh, you could see it. You could firmly feel it. He was looking at the goal man saying, okay, here it comes. Solid shot. And uh, as I said, his hat-trick and nine goals to three for Pony Express. A little over a minute remains in this first half. And I'm sure Amaro are going to have to change one or two things here. They need to improve their finishing. They need to improve on uh, not only creating those chances, but putting the pressure on Pony Express, who at the moment seem to be very much allowed to play their game. They have free reign. Everything they've done so far has turned into a goal. Little backhand shot. Looking for McKenzie, stolen by Campson. There was no real speed there. Campson with a shot towards that goal mouth, but it's going to be cleared by Daniels. Daniels takes it round. Nice little uh, defensive block there coming from Scott Sabaro. And all of a sudden, it uh, opens up very nicely here. Campson can pick up the ball, but he can't control it. Daniels left behind. Campson. Hammers that one downfield. Michael Armour, but he's not on the stick side. Vice will clear it, sends it out towards the boards. In comes Antonio Aguirre. As I said, now this game really picking up momentum. And uh, we only have a few seconds remaining here in the first half. Hagemeyer there, you can see her joining the rest of her teammates, but that will be it. So three goals to one overall for 
Goals added to the five already scored by Pony Express. Nine goals to three. I'm looking forward to how Amara will come out here in this second half because uh, they still have quite a bit of work to do. Pony Express are very much just allowed, being allowed to play their game. We'll let the players get off the uh, their ponies and uh, allow them to have a chat with their individual coaches. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you back here in just a few moments for the second half of the limited edition egg off final 2024. If you are in the area, I suggest you make your way to Sunset Chugger the Cocktail because this is the fun type polo match. It's where everyone's relaxed and chilling, just having a great time, we have great hors d'oeuvres, and a special drink for the day. Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us here at CTV Sports, bringing you the final of the Limited Edition 8 Gold 2024 at Grand Champions Polo Club with uh, up to 40 mile an hour gusts of winds, uh, as uh, we've been informed here by our field side correspondent, Amara Polo in the blue shirts. Uh, and before I go any further, let's see if Antonio Gary can start this second half uh, very, very confidently. Well, he has, and he's teed it up nicely for Chris Campson to pick up his fourth goal of the final. He's already scored three, all three coming from the penalty two spot, but all the hard work here done by uh, uh, Gary and then the finishing touch coming in from uh, Chris Campson. So they were back very, very quickly here. I think they all needed to, uh, I think they all know, knew exactly what they needed to do. And Amara Polo have come out very strong here at the top of chucker number four because if we go and have a little look at that first half, uh, the first chucker, two goals to nil in favour of Pony Express, but uh, 
Before I continue, let's just see if they can pick up another quick goal here, and this time by the number one. Well, Scott Sabaro, all of a sudden, we're seeing a completely different Amara Polo team out there. As I was saying, in that first chucker, and let's just look at this uh, replay once again. Nicely done here by Scott. Tees it up very nicely for himself. Scott Sabaro, two little touches. And all of a sudden, what was a six-goal deficit has now just gone down to four. Now, if they keep this sort of momentum up, the Lamponi Express are going to have to roll up their sleeves a little bit more because uh, Amaro, as I said, coming out very strong here at the top of chucker number four. So, as I was saying, chucker number one, very much uh, Pony Express, two goals to nil. Justin Daniels and Mackenzie Weiss picking up a goal both. And uh, this young man, Mackenzie Weiss, yeah, gets beaten there by Campson with like a half a yard or so to go in front of that goal mouth. But there was a whistle. So, let's see what the umpires made of that. Campson having had no choice. Here you see Mackenzie coming in again. There's the bump. Yeah, I see it now. Okay, there's the bump. So just slightly caught uh, off uh, offside there. A little bit too much of an angle for uh, the uh, the mounted official officials, I should say. And uh, a hit from the spot. A penalty two or a hit from the spot. No mistake for Mackenzie Vice. Uh, just a little too aggressive there in that write-off. Uh, unintentionally, of course, but of course the rules are the rules. So, after what looked like uh, a superb start here from uh, Amaro Polo, Pony Express picking up uh, another goal, which puts them into double figures. Ten goals to five then. We're in the fourth chucker. First chucker of... Uh, the second half, remember, we play six chuckers as of eight goal polo. And uh, that ball, this time intended for Justin Daniels. Just uh, taking the ball out into the corner. He's got uh, plenty of blue shirts trying to challenge him. Mackenzie Weiss beaten by Campson. And now Campson up against... Daniels, near side backhand. And another whistle will stop the play. Our ball went out of bounds. I had a feeling it might. Wasn't 100% sure here. You can see it. Very clear. There it is. Yeah, just going out as Campson tried to keep it in bounds or in the field. But the, the ball had already gone over the back line. So good call. And again, of course, thanks to the technology that we have with our end zone cams and the drone. And, of course, not to forget the most important camera of all, the center cam, the lovely Stephanie, who's out there, uh, able to uh, to show you that that ball had clearly crossed uh, the back line. So, good call. And here we go, then, on the move again. Daniels for Pony Express. Nice little lofted shot. A little bit too far out to the left-hand side and too far also for uh, Lily Hagemeyer to get onto that ball. She, for me, has scored one of the best goals uh, in this match, and that was in uh, chucker number two. Now, remember, we will, of course, have the prize presentation right after this game. It is a final as the players go for the fourth courtesy change. Chance for me to just give you another update on how they played in that first half. So, as I was saying, Pony Express picking up a goal or two goals in that first chucker. Justin and Mackenzie both uh, picking up... Uh, a goal each. Chucker number uh, two, um, Pony Express picking up, uh, and that's where that goal from Lily Hagemeyer came from. Uh, one for her, and again, Justin and Mackenzie picking up, so three goals there. Um, on the other hand, Chris Campson picked up two penalty twos for Amara Polo. So they left the field five goals to two. And uh, Chucker number three, again, four goals scored by Pony Express, a hat trick from Mackenzie Weiss, and a goal from Finn Segunda, and only, and that, well, I say only, another penalty two for Chris Campson for Amara Polo. So at half time, it was nine goals to three in favor of Pony Express. And then here, top of Chucker number four, Amara coming out so strong. Chris Campson and Scott Sabara both picking up uh, 
Very important early goals in chucker number four. Just another penalty two for Mackenzie Weiss, which was just a formality. So 10 goals to five. It's how, uh, where, or where we are at the moment uh, here in chucker number four. But uh, as I said, still plenty of time remaining on the clock for this chucker and, of course, the two chuckers thereafter. The Blues have it. Amara Polo and uh, Antonio Aguirre. Left that one for Campson. Would like it back. Campson, nice long ball, but uh, a little bit too far, a little bit off there for uh, Aguirre to pick up on. Little cut shot. And, um, well, there was an appeal from a blue player, player with the number three, a two on his shirt, beg your pardon, Antonio Aguirre. Umpire did not seem that as a, as a foul. Playing players continued. Daniels, still Daniels, in comes Campson for the challenge, takes it off Justin, and Campson, oh, you don't see that very often now, then can Daniels turn quick enough while well, there was already a new player coming down the line, this time Michael Armour, and uh, Michael will uh, try and run and take this all the way. Kenzie Weiss just puts it back, leaves it for Antonio, and a cheeky steal by Lily Hagemeyer. A little deflection did not help, but uh, again, great positioning play by uh, the, young, the young lady on the field. And here she is again. Nice swing. Just a little off time there. Stolen by, uh, and he's going to get a whistle on that. Let's have another look at that, the number two. Finn Segunda. And steals it off uh, the number two. Interesting one. Not an easy call to make. Let's wait and see what the umpires are made of that. Well, they've dropped the ball on the halfway line, so penalty five is definitely the, uh, the decision that the umpires have made. And it's going to go in favor of uh, Amara Polo. And I'm sure this will be a chance for Chris Campson to uh, try and put this ball as far downfield as he possibly can. Towards the east, of course. Here it comes. Campson looking for a blue player. Well, they had a deflection. Daniels very quick to pick up the ball, but another whistle. Now, was that a buried ball? Well, you can see the, uh, the disbelief there by Mackenzie Weiss. And it uh, would appear that the umpires are going to trigger this one and put this one to our IRO, Steve Lane. Right. Well, we had a foul, I can tell you that now. That is confirmed. Justin Daniels was uh, the man who uh, committed that foul. They challenged that decision by the umpires, but the umpires have overruled it and said, no, the foul and the call stands. So that would mean that Pony Express are out of challenges. Amara Polo still have one. And after that, over, after, after that ruling, they now will get, of course, the penalty shot uh, after that foul, that crossing, that right-away infringement caused by uh, uh, the number four in white by Justin Daniels. So to bring it within four then, here we go, Mr. Campson. I believe he's put that one wide. Yeah, he has. So Pony Express, very lucky there not to pick up a, a goal. With uh, a good minute and a half remaining here in chucker number four.
Pony Express have it. Mackenzie looking for... Oh, and he's found him. Finn. Under the next shot. Down the boards. Back to Mackenzie Vice. Campson. Well... He got a piece of it first, but Mackenzie staying with his man. Well done. There comes the ride off and the challenge from Aguirre. Now, was that slightly untoward? Here you see Mackenzie taking the ball off the boards. There's the bump. Yeah, and then ever so slightly, ever so slightly nudging a little bit of a rub there. So, uh, it from the spot for Pony Express to possibly make it 11 goals to five. And it looks like it could be Mr. Daniels here, player with the number four, is going to attempt to take this one. Penalty three, just putting it in onto the near side there. Well done, uh, Justin Dans. And I can also tell you that uh, this foul, which uh, was a foul, was challenged by Amaro. Uh, the umpires overturned it. So now both teams without a challenge. Going into chucker five and six. We will, I'm sure, get another throw in just before the end of chucker number four as the line up on the halfway line. Ball is back in play. Horn will be going any second now as Campson realizing he's going to have to uh, maybe just do a little bit more, as will the rest of his team for the remaining two chuckers on the near side. And Arsenal will pick up there by Scott Sabaro. Left it now for, what well, I was going to say, for uh, Aguirre. Campson having to do a little bit of housework here. Runs into Daniels. Daniels clearly blocking him just as he wanted to take the shot. But uh, we'll wait and see if the umpire saw that as well. Let's have another look at it on the replay here. Campson in. Come, there you see Daniels coming in. And uh, that will bring us to the end of Chucker number four. So two goals apiece. We'll be back in just a few seconds for Chucker number five. If you are in the area, I suggest you make your way to Sunset Chuckle the Cocktail because this is the fun type polo match. It's where everyone's relaxed and chilling, just having a great time. We have great hors d'oeuvres and a special drink for the day. Fifth chucker action about to start here. Great to have you with us. CTV Sports, the final of the limited edition. Eight gold 2024. Uh, looks like we've got a little bit of a break in the sky there. The sun is coming out. And uh, let's see if that has any impact on the wind. It's been rather gusty out there, up to 40 mile an hour gusts of wind on field number five. We are, of course, coming to you from Grand Champions Polo Club. The, you can see Lake Worth Road in the background there where the, all the flags are. And... Uh, 
Amara Polo still very much trying to get control in a group of Pony Express who at the moment seem to be uh, Uh, I can tell you that just before the end of that uh, chuck, a penalty one was given uh, for Blue. So they get an automatic goal, of course, and possession from the halfway line. Well, this is exactly the kind of little mini break that they can do with as uh, Campson sends that one out to uh, his right-hand side. Cleared, quickly turned, and let's see if uh, Mr. Daniels can run that one down the field. Amaro would like to capitalize, and Chris Campson especially. And he will do everything he can to just keep that one going. And what a superb finish there by Campson. So all was not lost after getting that penalty one. Campson picking up uh, his sixth goal of the game. Really nicely done there by Chris Campson. So, seven goals to 11. But still, a comfortable cushion for Pony Express. But maybe Antonio Aguirre can uh, put up another nice little goal here for uh, Amara Polo. Didn't quite get the finish he wanted on the near side. Didn't have a lot of goal to shoot at. So definitely an A for trying. And uh, Pony Express clearly aware of the fact that they're up against, a, well, I wouldn't say a completely different team, but the way they're playing is a lot more effective uh, than they did in the first half. The boys in blue. And Pony Express, of course, will have to adjust accordingly. Backhand shot from uh, Aguirre. Met and picked up by Crampson, Campson. Chris Campson there, teeing it up very nicely. And that ball will go to the number two. And Aguirre just did not get that touch after Michael uh, put the ball down uh, downfield. Teeing it up just perfectly for him. Very unlucky there. That would uh, have been a much needed and a very good goal. Everybody fighting for it. Well, there will be a whistle eventually, as you can see here. A lot of players coming down all to the into that danger zone. Here you see Campson. Daniels rides him off. A deflection coming off. And, uh, yeah, that's already where the number two uh, in white had a, uh, established himself on that line. At least that's how it looked to me, Finn Secunda. Let's see if the umpire saw that as well. A lot of uh, polo going on there. No, it's going to go in favor of uh, Amara. And another penalty to another one from the spot here for Chris Campson. No mistake. So, three goals all of a sudden. They were down by six. Uh, at the end, uh, oh, they were down by six at the end of the first half. Uh, two goals apiece in the f fourth, and now two goals to nil in favor of still Pony Express. But the, campang, uh, the comeback campaign has very much started here. Amara Polo working very hard to draw level and go into double figures. <laughs> And then just having a few words with uh, one of our two mounted officials here. You see the ball being thrown in again. Taken by the number one by Scott Savaro. Daniels came across. Interesting call, this one. Very interesting indeed. It's going to go in favor of Amaro. Campson looks like he's having some a heated discussion there with uh, one of our two mounted officials who have been, uh, as Juan Bellini was saying yesterday, doing an absolutely amazing job here this season. So Amaro Polo with a...
penalty to bring the team within two of uh, Pony Express's 11. Uh, definitely looks like uh, Kams is going to go and go for the direct hit, the direct shot. Here we go, Chris Kamsen. To make it nine goals, 11. Oh, well done, Chris. That's what he will do. So again, from the line and a, another hat trick here for Kamsen in this uh, fifth chucker. Remember, he scored, uh, well, not quite a hat trick. He scored two penalty twos in the second and then a third one in penalty uh, in uh, chucker number three. Uh, but uh, the way things are going at the moment, it's going to go down to the wire. Pony Express started so strong. And Amaro winning that uh, that ball again. This time it's the turn of Antonio Aguirre. Aguirre around the outside. Can he get past or through Daniels? A little backhand clearance shot, but only as far as Mackenzie Weiss. He gets his pocket picked by Antonio Aguirre, but the umpires having to resort to that whistle once again. There is the backhand. And uh, as a result of that play, now then, how are they going to position this ball? There's a lot at stake here. Now we have our courtesy change. We'll know exactly what's going on when we come back. But uh, this could now be a game changer here. Campson, there he is. Good shot of uh, Chris. Been very consistent uh, in uh, the way he's been playing, but also very consistent in his handicap. Six goals now. Good 20 years, Chris, has been uh, six goals. So as we wait for the players to come back out onto the field... Daniel's there with uh, Mackenzie Weiss. You know, they can't let up too soon now. You've got you've to finish this on a high because uh, Amaro, like I said, they had a bit of a shaky start coming into this final, but then things started to open up very nicely for them. They uh, came back completely uh, with a different mindset uh, in the second half. So everybody back on the saddle or in the saddle. A hit from the spot after that foul. Quickly taken by Mackenzie Weiss. Looking for Daniels. Try to pick it up on the near side. He's got uh, Finn Segunda there as well. Ball out to the left. No, I was going to say out to the left to Lily Hagemeyer. She's been uh, left to her own devices. Michael Armour. Gives it to Campson. Campson now turns it. Weiss was with him, of course, the entire time. Backhand shot coming from the number four from Daniels. Now, whoever jumps on this line or whoever will be closest to that line will have, have the automatic right away. While well, Campson working it very hard there with, uh, and he's stolen it. What a great play here by McKenzie. McKenzie Weiss, one, two, three, in the air. Campson won't be happy with that. And McKenzie even more so. Picking up uh, his seventh goal of the game. Yeah, well done, Mackenzie. Well done. Not much Chris Council could have done there as they make their way back to the middle. A little under two and a half minutes remain here in the penultimate fifth chucker. Ball's back in play. Picked up again by Pony Express and Finn Segunda, but Campson coming in right to left and down that line. Oh, no, the players are going to, or the umpires are going to allow them to continue playing. It'll be Mackenzie Weiss in front and on his own to make it uh, an epic number 13. 
And luckily for him, Daniels was there, as was uh, the number two. But uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that again. Who got the final touch on that one? Well, it's irrelevant. It went wide. Campson, with a minute and 40 remaining. Campson might decide to work and run this one himself. There's the open cut shot. Down and over the halfway line. In comes Michael Armour. Cleared by Daniels. That ball will go out of bounds, so there will be a possession. It's going to go in favour of Amaro Polo. And Campson, definitely within range. Play is called. Campson wants to just get a little bit quicker, uh, a little bit closer, beg your pardon, to get closer to that goal mount before he then takes that shot here. Then comes the under the neck shot, slightly out to the left as we tick down under one minute remaining here in the fifth chucker. So at the moment, with uh, four goals to their name, a penalty one and then uh, a hat trick from Mr. Campson, just the one goal from uh, Mackenzie Weiss. Three goals is uh, what they need to somehow cover when they come back then for the sixth and final chucker and Pony Express. I'm sure we're wanting to just hold on to the ball for as long as they can to make it now impossible for Amaro to play their game. Open backhand. Nicely done. Picked up by McKenzie. McKenzie out towards the boards. We're down to the last uh, 15 seconds of play. Still McKenzie Vice for Pony Express. Try to snap it there under the neck. Yeah, they need to make a little bit of space there for all the players. Near side backhand shot coming from Daniels. And this one again, just going out of bounds. And that'll bring us also to the end of Chucker number five. So what did I say? Four goals to one in favor of Mara Polo. Three goals in it. Make sure you don't miss the sixth and final Chucker when we return right here on CTV Sports. Welcome back, everybody. Sixth and final Chaka of the limited edition Ankle 2024. We are, of course, bringing this to you from Grand Champions Polo Club Field Number 5, a place to watch any polo from 6 to 26 goal right here at CTV Sports. Great to have you with us. And, uh, well, and I'm going uh, over uh, covered ground here, but I just need to highlight it again. Uh, Amara Polo, the team in blue, with Scott Sabara, Antonio Gary, Chris Campson, and Michael Armour. Uh, getting off to a little bit of a shaky start. Pony Express opening up that, uh, that arsenal of uh, shots on goal very early on. Picking up two in the first chucker, three in the second, four in the third. Uh, so doing a very good job. It uh, took uh, Amara Polo a whole half, really, until they started uh, connecting and gelling and playing the polo that uh, they wanted to. 
instrumental in that has been, of course, Mr. Chris Campson, uh, picking up a total of uh, seven goals so far of those nine. We had uh, two by Scott Sabaro, a penalty one. Well, that goes to the team, but we've just given it to Scott and uh, one from regular play. And um, they've been toiling away at getting closer and closer to uh, uh, what uh, Pony Experts had been scoring. As I said, at the end of the half time, it was nine goals scored against just the three from Amaro Polo. Uh, it was two apiece in chucker number four, but chucker number five, that is where Amaro really turned things around, picking up four goals to one over Pony Express, um, bringing them within three goals uh, into the uh, sixth and final chuck, and that's where we are now. Ball's back in play, and uh, Daniels trying to... Uh, Steer that one between the uprights. Went out of bounds. So the Blues will have it. Amaro Polo. And a knock-in coming from uh, the west end of uh, this uh, field. Remember, it runs east to west. In comes Daniels on the boards. Campson looks over his shoulder. Looking for someone to play it to. Changes direction. Still has Daniels hovering there with him. Campson out to, towards the boards. He was happy and lucky to keep that one within the boards. Now then, can Michael Armour, can he do something here? Or Antonio Aguirre? Little near side backhand, picked up on the halfway line, tried to control it, did a very good job. Mackenzie Weiss and that ball a little bit short there for Lily Hagemeyer, unlucky. Remember, she scored that superb goal in uh, chucker number two. But uh, the possession, you've got to give it up to Pony Express. They just have more possession of the ball. And they have had more possession throughout, of the ball throughout this entire game which uh, is a reflection, of course, of uh, the amount of goals that they've scored, especially this young man. And that combination, Daniels and Weiss, lethal on the field. Finn, of course, also very strong and a part of that equation. He's on the move now, Finn Segunda. Uh, not quite able to finish it. Uh, Kamsen, with a little under the neck, will clear that ball, send it back towards the halfway line. Hagemeyer gets a very nice piece on that back round, uh, backhand, but it's picked up now by the number three, Chris Kamsen. Lot of space on the, uh, the left side of that field. But Daniels... Uh, well, he's going to turn defense into offense and send Amara back down their own half. Oh, broken play, and Daniels will jump on this very quickly. Justin Daniels, one shot, a deflection. Did not go through the two uprights. Antonio taking on Daniels. Shy of uh, four minutes remaining. Once again, it'll be Antonio Aguirre to take the, the pace out of the play and keep the calm. Campson. Rotation working very well. This time a little bit too, uh, too deep downfield. As Finn Segunda. Tried to clear it. Now a whistle will stop the action with uh, a little over, a little under, beg your pardon, three and a half minutes remaining here in uh, the sixth and final chuck. Remember, please do stay with us. We will have a, a prize presentation. The best playing pony and the MVP, of course, will be awarded after this game for the prize presentation. So, as I said, do stick around. It'd be great to have you with us. And uh, just another quick reminder that the high goal action continues tomorrow, 9.45, Allegria taking on uh, the Maltese Falcons. That was, again, that was used, supposed to have happened yesterday. And then right after doubleheader, we've got Casablanca taking on Senfest. So, just waiting for the players to come back out on the field. And uh, this is still doable. This is still doable. Three points. 
And if we look at that last chucker in particular, a hat-trick from Campson, a penalty one for the team. So four goals to one. Uh, and there you have those three goals. So that could possibly push this final into overtime, if not before. But we had a whistle just before the courtesy change against Amaro for Pony Express. Penalty two and uh, no mistake for Mackenzie Weiss picking up his third penalty two of this final. Back to the halfway line they come. Ball is thrown in. Picked up very quickly by Daniels, who gets the support from McKenzie. And they are, the two gentlemen in the white shirts. The rotation now working very well. McKenzie going back to the front as... Uh, yeah. Campson quickly takes his hit from the spot. Two and a half on the clock. And they need to start scoring. And they need to start scoring soon. Uh, it's just not what going their way today. Campson comes back to steal the ball. First challenge will be the number two in white, Finn Segunda. And another whistle will give us a break in the action. Let's have another look here. Camson. High hook. It's going to be a 5B, a hit from the center for Amara Polo. Chris Campson surely will have glanced at the scoreboard, seeing that there is still plenty of time remaining in this uh, in this chucker. And uh, Aguirre, little set play, Campson. A little unlucky there not to get the finish. He might get a second chance. Here he comes, Campson. And he's put it just wide. So Pony Express dodging another very, very important bullet here. Still holding on to that four-goal advantage. 13 goals to nine. And the clock, of course, ticking down now for Amaro and in favor of Pony Express. I wonder if they can uh, if they can just turn this around, get another couple of runs there and get a couple of quick goals. But uh, Pony Express has possession out to the right. Daniels, good touch. Still Daniels, bouncing ball, controls it very well, takes it now into the half of uh, Amara Polo. Daniels checking up. He's got... Uh, Finn just behind him, stolen on the near side. Once again, great stick work here and horsemanship by displayed by Antonio Aguirre. Near side backhander coming in from Daniels. I beg your pardon, uh, from uh, uh, Finn. And it's a two-man horse race down the field. Amara trying to control and retain possession of the ball. Campson couldn't control it. McKenzie. Huge shot up to, to the front door. Just a little bit too short for uh, Lily Hangar to pick up on. But again, with the number two, Finn Segunda doing a superb job here this afternoon. Campson. Takes on two defending players. Campson on the near side will run away with it if he can. The last few uh, 
seconds remaining here in this uh, final. And um, they're going to try and finish on a high, of course. Antonio Aguirre taking that last ball downfield as he kept it in play. Yeah, he has just... This time it will go out of bounds. So there you have it. Just the one goal coming from uh, Pony Express from uh, Mackenzie Weiss, making it a total of 13 against, uh, well, no goals scored by uh, Amara Polo in the four, uh, six and final chucka. So your final score then, uh, nine goals to 12. Congratulations to... Uh, the Pony Express, Lily Hagemeyer, Finn Segunda, Justin Daniels, Mackenzie Weiss. Commiserations, but a great display. They came back strong in the second half. Scott Sabara, Antonio Geary, Chris Campson, and Michael Armour. We will let them uh, get off their ponies, decompress, as we like to say, and then uh, join us in a few minutes for the prize presentation right here, CTV Sports.
can't hear you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for sticking around for the prize presentation. The players there, as you can see, making their way up onto the podium. And uh, unfortunately, one of the players from Maro, uh, Michael Amor, uh, Amor, Amor, already had to leave. Uh, so uh, he will be getting his uh, runners-up prize, I'm sure, uh, no doubt. Now then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Mr. Kale Newman will be conducting the prize presentation. Uh, but before we do that, let's just get the fourth and final player up there. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to start straight away with the Grand Champions Best Playing Pony of uh, the Limited Edition 8 Gold Final. There she is, Montemar Fanatica. She was ridden by uh, uh, Mackenzie Weiss in the fifth chuck. A round of applause, please. Winning the Best Playing Pony of this Limited Edition 8 Goal Final. So, well done, Mackenzie, as he makes his way back up there. And as I said, uh, Kale Newman, our polo manager, will be conducting the prize presentation. There he is in the middle. We're going to start, of course, with the runners up. And uh, I would like you to please put your hands together for the number one in the runners up team there, Amara Polo. Give it up for Scott Sabaro. Well done, Scott. At number two then, a young man with a huge talent and a huge potential and a huge future. Give it up for Antonio Aguirre. Well done, Antonio. And then, of course, there is only one man who can score as many goals as he did. A total of two, three, four, five, six, seven. Give it up for Mr. Chris Campson. Well done, Chris. And as I said, uh, the man with the number four on his shirt had to already leave. So we're going to go straight over to, uh, well, of course, Michael Armour. Well done. Straight over to the winners then of the limited edition eight goal final, Pony Express. And uh, what a great way to start with the only lady in that team. Please step forward, Lily Hagemeyer. Well done, Lily. Scoring a superb goal in... Uh, Chuck at number two. Well done indeed. At number two, the ladies and gentlemen, the young man, another big, big talent, Finn Segunda. Well done, Finn. And then to the man who scored a total of eight goals in that final. Number three, give it up for Mackenzie Weiss. There he is. Well done, Mackenzie. And of course, his, uh, his wingman. And a super, super polo player, Mr. Justin Daniels. Big smile on his face. Well done, Justin. And before we present uh, or hand over the big trophy, we do, of course, have the award for the MVP. And I kind of gave it away when I said that he scored eight goals, ladies and gentlemen. MVP of the limited edition eight goal is, of course, Mackenzie Weiss. Well done, Mackenzie. So, well done to both teams as uh, we now wait for that uh, very special moment. If I could ask Amaro Polo, please, to exit stage left. And uh, we'll have Patricio Paz uh, lift, or at least try and lift that beautiful beat of the limited edition 8 goal 2024. Once again, everybody, put your hands together for Pony Express, Lily Hagemeyer, Finn Segunda, Mackenzie Weiss, and, of course, Mr. Justin Daniels, well done indeed, Pony Express. And uh, that is it from us for this uh, Thursday morning here from Grand Champions Polo Club. Remember, the high goal action continues tomorrow morning here on CTV Sports. Join us at 9.45 when uh, Alegria will be taking on the Maltese Falcons. And then at quarter past 11, the action continues in the World Polo League's Triple Crown with Casablanca taking on Senfest from all of us here at CTV Sports and at Grand Champions. Thank you very much for tuning in. It's been great having you, and we look forward to having you tune in again tomorrow morning, 9.45. Enjoy the rest of your day.